there were uh, two different groups of Italians who made their way into the Ozarks in the post-Civil War years. Uh, the first group uh, are more commonly referred to as the Waldensians or the Waldenses, and they settled uh, near Monette, down uh, southwest of here. And they were from northern Italy, from the Alps in northern Italy. And the reason they're referred to as the Waldensians or Waldensians is because of their religious practices. They were Protestants who, uh, they represented a very old dissenting movement against the Catholic Church. And it was a very interesting group, very small group that ended up coming to Missouri. But this same group in the 1850s, before our Civil War, they had left Europe and moved to South America, most of them to Uruguay. After, uh, after violence erupted there, they went back to Europe briefly and then came back to the United States, uh, came in through New York, and eventually made their way to southwest Missouri. Very circuitous path they took here, but they made their way to southwest Missouri they bought land from uh, the railroads, and uh, many of them became farmers and, and uh, settled there in the Monette area, and several of their descendants are still there today. They established their own church, uh, which today is a Presbyterian church, and uh, they were one of two uh, distinct Waldensian colonies in, in America, or at least in the southern part of the United States, the other one being in North Carolina, I believe. Uh, but uh, they're still there today. One of, uh, one of our graduate students is working on a project. Hopefully it will be a master's thesis on the history of this community, a very neat community mm -hmm. down there. But uh, the Waldensians were one group, probably better known as the other group of Italian settlers in the Ozarks, and these are the Italians who established the town of Tonti Town in northwest Arkansas, and it's the same group also that established Rosati, Missouri, up in the, the Rolla St. James area in the northern part of the Ozarks, but they also have an interesting story. These were Italians who were uh, many of them were from northern Italy. They were also uh, from central Italy as well. And these were uh, Catholic Italians, as most Italians uh, were and are. And these Italians first left Italy and came to the United States in the 1890s. In 1895, there was a New York banker and industrialist uh, by the name of Austin Corbin, and Corbin, got the, Corbin owned a big plantation down in the Delta in Arkansas. And he got the idea that he would import Italian immigrants to work on his plantation in Arkansas. And he would divide up the plantation into, into little farms, basically. And he would let them pay off the farms over a very long period of time. It was going to work out very well for him, probably better for him than it would for them. And so he brought over several hundred Italians. One group came in 1895. They sailed uh, from Italy to New Orleans, came up the Mississippi River, and then to the plantation, which was right there uh, close to the Mississippi. Uh, a couple of years later, or just about a year and a half later, another group came from Italy. Uh, these, again, were people uh, pulled from all over Italy, mostly from northern Italy. Ended up in the same place, different route. They came through New York and traveled by train uh, to Arkansas. But the Italian immigrants quickly realized that this plantation, Sunnyside Plantation in Arkansas, was not an ideal place to be. It certainly was unlike anything they were used to. Uh, mosquito infested. It was flat. And a lot of them were from northern Italy where it was hilly or mountainous. And they, were, they had to learn how to grow cotton. And it was just a completely foreign situation for them. And very soon they started looking to go elsewhere. Several of them died from malaria. And it was just a, a bad situation. Their leader, 
at Sunnyside was an Italian uh, Catholic priest by the name of Pietro Bandini. And Father Bandini, who was a member of the, uh, the Scalabrini Fathers, uh, these were, uh, uh, this was a group of Italian priests who, who kind of made it their mission to protect Italian immigrants who, were brought, who came into the United States. And so he was here with these Italian immigrants, and he went out on their behalf and looked for a place where they could relocate to. And he ended up somehow in northwest Arkansas and saw this land that was for sale, uh, not far from Fayetteville, uh, which is where the University of Arkansas is, uh, just outside a, a little town called Springdale, uh, which is uh, still there today, uh, one of the bigger towns in northwest Arkansas. And they uh, bought a few hundred acres of land, and about 40 of the families from Sunnyside, way down in the delta of Arkansas, followed him to northwest Arkansas, and they established uh, the Tonti Town. And which was a little Italian enclave there in, uh, in the middle of the Ozarks in, in northwest Arkansas. Another group of the Sunnyside Italians eventually ended up uh, by rail in what we know as Rosati, Missouri. And both of those communities had in common that since they were settled by Italians, they uh, got heavy into the production of grapes and wine, and uh, both of them, or at least uh, Tonti Town, still has a grape festival, and I think uh, Rosati, or it's probably moved to St. James, has uh, some sort of grape wine related festival up there as well. When you're driving up I-44 to St. Louis, you'll notice there are several vineyards in that area, and a lot of them uh, originated with the Italians who settled there in the early 1900s. Uh, but this is uh, uh, still uh, today two of the more, especially Tonti Town, which is, which is held on to its Italian heritage uh, more consciously than has Rosati, is still very much uh, a, a sign of this early diversity in the Ozarks. Why the name? Tonti Town? Uh, Tonti was the, the name of one of the original explorers who had, uh, who had come to what's now Arkansas in the late 1600s, uh, Henry de Tonti, and he was Italian, so they, they took the name. He had no connection to this group, but uh, he was probably the first Italian to ever come into the Mississippi River Valley, and so they, they named the town for him, Tonti Town. Yeah. Is north, of, uh, north of Fayetteville. Fayetteville. Yeah. Tonti Town? Tonti Town is just a west of Springdale. It's basically, uh, today, the, uh, Springdale has, has basically grown out and engulfed Tonti Town. It, it's, a, it's a suburb of, of Springdale today, and there are lots of uh, subdivisions and stuff like that. It's, and the, the descendants of the Italians who settled there, the Italians, as, as we say in the, the Ozarks, uh, are greatly outnumbered by the newcomers who have moved in to the area today, but they maintain their cultural heritage. Uh, anyone who's interested, there's, a, there's an excellent book uh, written by a friend of mine named Susan Young. It's called So Big This Little Place. And uh, it's, it's all about the history of Tonti Town and uh, the descendants of the, these Italian settlers and all that kind of stuff. Lots of really neat pictures in there and stuff like that. Uh, but Tonti Town has done a very good job of, of maintain, consciously maintaining its Italian heritage. And there are a couple of uh, really nice Italian restaurants there. Yeah, uh, I, uh, I believe it is. It's been two or three years since I fished that one out of somewhere. It, it, may, it may come out of this book. Yeah, that's, that is uh, Tonti Town. That's the Catholic Church in Tonti Town. And I believe that's the schoolhouse uh, on down from it. Uh, but it was just a little Italian village there in, in the Ozarks. Uh, and uh, certainly... Uh, Father uh, Bandini was 
largely responsible for them being in the Ozarks, uh, but uh, a neat little place.